Welcome to Success Leaves Clues 2, coming to you live from Villa Park this morning in the heart of Birmingham, where I'm joined by lifelong Wolves fan, also from the Midlands, Jamie Radford. Jamie is the CEO and also the founder of the Accounts Payable Association. That association was founded seven years ago, and earlier this week, Jamie played to a full house as his conference had 400 people in the motorcycle uh, museum. He finished it off with a gala dinner and has pretty much established himself as one of the key influencers in the whole finance transformation space within the UK and starting to stretch that globally. Jamie, would you like to give a little intro to the audience? Yep, so Jamie Radford, founder and CEO of the Accounts Payable Association. I've worked with this young man for many, many years. And as Michael said, we were delighted earlier this week to have a packed house of 400 plus for our gala dinner and conference, which was absolutely phenomenal. But thank you for today, Michael. I first met Jamie oh, about seven and a half years ago when you contacted me and you said you were looking for a speaker for your first conference. All of these conferences have taken place locally in Birmingham. And I turned up on the day and he says to me, Michael, I don't have an MC. Do you mind being the MC for the day as well as delivering the speech? And for those of you who have to deliver a speech, actually it turned out to be perfect because I spent the entire day practicing talking to the audience and then delivering my speech was actually flawless because I wasn't in the slightest bit nervous. Had I turned up in the afternoon to do it, I probably would have struggled. I think it was only the second or third major speech I had to deliver. I was starting out on the conference speaking circuit. This man was starting with an attendance of, I'd say, 65, I think, from memory. We always jokingly say that the conference started in the telephone booth in, in Digbeth. Well, it's too big for that now. So the first question I've got for you, Jamie, because we, we talk, there's so much talk these days about founders and who set up the latest business, and it's always tech-focused. But yours isn't a tech-focused, yours is a people-focused community. But the question I've got for you, since we're approximately the same age, seven years ago, why did you decide to do this? Well, look, I was in the same space. I was a consultant. I traveled the world uh, trying to fix people's processes, people, training, all in the finance shared service center space. Um, everywhere I went, there was people that looked after every part of a finance function, whether that was the receivables, the accountants of the world had institutes and associations, and the hardest working organizations out there, the payables folk had nothing at all. Mm. Uh, and I was shocked. I went around the world, couldn't find any organization that looked after the payables folk. So we went about creating a group, a forum, mm. a LinkedIn forum, uh, that was now no, what's now known as the Accounts Payable Forum. That little group, mm -hmm. 200, I think you were one of my first actually, Michael, I yeah. invited you to come along and get involved in that LinkedIn group. Mm -hmm. That group over the, the period of two years grew from zero to 26,500 members. Mm -hmm. All of them, UK and Ireland originally, yeah. all chatting around payables, the challenges they face, and that, that's where the heart of this grew. So we then took that model of all of these individuals that needed a, a, a home, somewhere they could call home, mm -hmm. and we then created three things. We created a membership base, which is all around community. Mm -hmm. We created courses, certifications, and qualifications, which is what we now stand for. Mm -hmm. And the third thing, as we mentioned earlier, we then gave a place where they can actually go and network for peer-to-peers, which is our event schedules and our conferences. Mm -hmm. So that's where it grew seven, eight years, probably a little longer than that, eight, maybe eight, nine years ago, yep. grew from humble beginnings, and that group now stands at well over 50,000 people. 50,000? 50, so, absolutely, yeah. Across the UK, Ireland, uh, and I believe beyond. Globally now, absolutely. So we have a global footprint. We are actually now the largest payables group in the world in terms of our social following. Congratulations. Thank you very much. I think, I mean, I, 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 we all look at who's successful in business and what they've achieved, and they give us the sound bites as to what it takes. But there's always that bit where you start off where, you know, you're nervous. You've got to put it out there as to what it is you want to achieve. The cold sweat on the back of your neck, is this actually going to work or am I going to flop? And you've gone through that. So you must, like, how did you feel when you decided I'm going to put it out there and I'm going to put on a conference and I'm going to do it in my own hometown where, you know, well, look, I mean, again, you know, Michael mentioned that our first conference had about 60, 65 people. I remember standing at the front. This man coached me a little bit. He said, look, be clear, be concise. I stood up on stage and forgot all of the advice you gave me. <laughs> uh, I, I was sweating. I was sitting in a room. Even though I had notes, I wasn't sure what I was going to say. 
But the one thing that took over was that the people in those room, in that room, were as nervous as I was. Yeah. And we just formed a community and I found my confidence. Mm -hmm. I stopped sweating. Yeah. You were there supporting us. You were a great MC for us. But what I found was that ultimately it was about talking to people. Mm -hmm. It was the community element and I found my confidence. So if I'd have started my speech at the end of the day, I'd have been absolutely fine. Yeah. But when I look back now from what we did earlier this week in terms of having 400 plus people, I had the confidence yeah. because I knew everybody in that room was rooting for me and rooting mm -hmm. for our community. Mm -hmm. That's the magic source. Mm -hmm. And like one of the things that comes up regularly in the conversations we have amongst transformation professionals is that you don't successfully deliver change unless you actually have a vision of what it is you're attempting to achieve. Well, when you started out, because now I've, I've attended all of the conferences, um, when you started out, from day one, you were rocking off the stage going, we'll make it bigger next year. We're going to go to two days. We're gonna have a gala dinner. We'll have the black tie event. We'll make these people feel special. We'll give awards. We'll give them recognition and we'll help promote them. But did you really seriously have all of that vision at the start? I would love to say yes, but I didn't. Uh, you know, what I wanted to do was really create a platform mm -hmm. that the payables folk around the UK and Ireland predominantly had a voice and had a yeah. platform. That's where we started. Yeah. And as it's grown, we obviously always want to try and challenge, we want to try and grow the community. Mm -hmm. Where we are today, it's all around not only giving the community a voice and a challenge, but ourselves as well. Mm -hmm. We as business owners, mm -hmm. we want to make sure that we're always challenging ourselves. And one of the things I would absolutely say for anybody who's listening to this is that every day is a learning day. Mm -hmm. And any, when you're talking about finance communities, um, you, you coined the phrase that it's not the sexiest of industries. No. But actually, the people that work within it absolutely are rock stars. Yeah. They should really be at the forefront of everything that goes on in every business. Mm -hmm. And all I would honestly say is that when I sat in front of or stood in front of 400 plus people mm -hmm. earlier this week, yeah. I felt like a rock star. Yeah. It was my day to be a rock star, yeah. but it was also everybody else's day to be that ultimate rock star mm -hmm. as well. So, yeah, giving people a platform and a voice is absolutely what we stand for. Mm. And there's some interesting uh, ways in which you've gone about doing that. And I noticed the lapel badge that you're wearing there. Do you want to tell them a little bit about the influencer community and how you've made everybody else feel like a rock star? Yeah, so, yeah, so the lapel badges Michael mentions there, so for anybody who wants one, they're not like Blue Peter badges. Um, <laughs> you have to absolutely be an influencer in our community. So what we, what we realized very early on is that we are a, a membership body, but we're also a community. Mm -hmm. So having people that support the community is really, really important. Mm -hmm. So we went about five, six years ago to go out and find all the most influential people we could find in our industry, in our profession, and we would then reward them with the accolade of an influencer. Yeah. So five years ago, we started with 50 people. And in the audience today, we've got a few of our influencers with us today. Mm -hmm. But actually what, what was really important for us was that um, we needed to recognize those individuals and what they've done for our industry. So we, this, year, this week, as we sat in front of that you know, 400 plus people, mm -hmm. and I asked everybody to raise who are an influencer, mm -hmm. they proudly wore their badges, they proudly wore their gold lanyards, mm -hmm. but they also proudly then had the accolade that we wanted them to, and they went into our community and wanted to support one another. Yeah. So absolutely, you're an influencer, you've been an influencer for a number of years, Michael, because it's not about people that actually predominantly always work in the payable space, mm -hmm. but you make a difference. Mm -hmm. You want to make a difference. You want to make a difference to people's lives, mm -hmm. to the processes, and ultimately to businesses' bottom line. Yeah. That's what you do. That's yeah. the finance transformation that you do. And like I mean, watching the evolution of the conference has been fantastic. Like literally, I think, I think I did a little promo video for the second one, and I was walking around the conference hall and there was 200 people in it. There was 200 people in it, and it was possibly something in the region of 10 to 12 sponsors software providers lining the walls of the room of what was, what was quite a substantial conference space. You've had some awesome speakers uh, down through the years as well. Um, reaching a stage where you get 400 people to give up a day, but not just the day and the night as well. So they all had to go, get changed, put on the black tie, put on the good dress, come back and get their awards. That's a ferocious accomplishment, particularly then it's only three years or less than three years since COVID closed the world down. How how are you succeeding in putting bums on seats? Do you know what, I think, yes. Yeah. So one of the, the, the biggest successes this year has been that we've had the C-suite turn up. So we've had right. CFOs, we've had finance directors, we've had 
uh, financial controllers who have actually started to attend our conferences. Mm -hmm. So what they're seeing now for the first time is that they're not a back office team. Right. We use, we coined the phrase, the backbone of an organization. Yeah. So when you get C-suite attending gala dinners, mm -hmm. proud of the organizations and the people that are in that room, mm -hmm. that's the secret sauce once again. Mm -hmm. It's the people that matter. So yes, we can all transform processes, systems, you've got to focus on the people. Mm -hmm. So to get people in that room and get C-suite listening, learning, and engaging, which we absolutely had at the gala dinner, it was probably a really proud moment of mine yeah. to have go round and try to influence the behaviours of C-suite. And it is, it is what we all try to do. Mm. Anybody who's trying to sell any solution to anybody of one of our customers, they all target the C-suite. Yeah. They all do, which is fine. But actually what we've done as a community is we've worked with the people on the front line, the people that do the day jobs. And we've just progressed up through as a community. Mm -hmm. And those C-suite now visit and they're so proud of what their teams and their people achieve. Mm. That's actually a very interesting point because one of the things we'll come on to talking about later in the day is how do you actually achieve change, which is so fundamentally different to do. And all of us as, as consultants, we, we focus on the C-suite. So we go in at the top to try and convince where the, the benefits are and what we can deliver. And one of the things we'll discuss is some of the challenges we'll face in actually delivering that. You've gone in at the other end. Yep. And it's paying dividends for you in the turnout, not only are you now organizing your annual conference and you know it speaks for itself from the attendance perspective, you're all now all organizing regional summits. Absolutely. So, so one of the things we realize as well is that, like a good comedian, <laughs> you go to see a comedian, they don't come to see you. That's the way it works. So we decided to go on the road. We wanted to go to regional regions around the UK and actually an island as well. And we wanted to take our educational programs to the masses. Mm -hmm. So where people may struggle with budget or commitments, we'll go to the regions and we'll educate them. Mm -hmm. And there's three things we do. So it's an educational program. It's a little bit of peer to peer networking. It's giving people confidence. Yeah. And the third part is really having that networking. It's, it's the professional networking that I think that's the missing part as well. Mm -hmm. So when, when people came to our conference very early doors, they sat very segmented. Yeah. Even within their own little chairs, they weren't really networking. Mm -hmm. The back end of the day, when they suddenly realized that everybody was exactly the same, they're mm -hmm. all in the same dilemma, same team, same processes, same issues, the networking started to happen. Mm -hmm. And that's where the community spirit came out. So yes, we go out and do those updates. And the power is absolutely in that networking area. Mm. And actually, it was very interesting to watch the other day because it's quite challenging to organize a conference. And then when you actually add in the extra layer that you're going to have an evening event as well and the logistics that go into that, and the commitment that you're asking of somebody else to give up you know, for the full day, that, that, that's just incredible. Um, and I look at it and I go, that, that's actually, that's a bit scary. You know, the conference itself, a lot of people can try and pull one off, but to try and pull off your celebratory gala dinner off the back of your conference, I don't think I've seen anybody do that. And, and it worked, it worked, I, I, know, I was there, it worked, it was very, very effective. But one of the things I noticed in the afternoon was, you had succeeded with the networking. Because they were like looking at me going, ah, leave the agenda aside, Michael. I'm quite happy talking to the person now that I've met in the room and, and take it from there. Um, and they're, they're a good bunch, they're a, they're a personable bunch, and now they're building their confidence. So I look at it and I go, we've got them networking, we've got them forming part of the panels, they're standing up to talk. What's the next stage? I think the next stage is that we know, so there's people that are progressing through. So you've got the rising stars, you know, we have our awards, yeah. we have our, and we want to actually promote and bring through the next line of people. So when we are looking at our awards, we're not just giving awards out because we want, you know, on that day, on that, that week or that year, somebody that's recognized. Mm -hmm. We want that next community. We want the people to be progressing through. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we absolutely do all of the time mm -hmm. is try and recognize individuals, but help happily promote them and put them on that stage. Yeah. And let's be honest, Michael, you're a true professional. It's not easy to stand in front of 400 people no. and look and talk. Mm -hmm. But I think you'll agree that everybody that sat on our panels earlier this week mm -hmm. were phen phenomenal. Yes. The confidence was there once they had the support group and they had a community talking to each other. Mm -hmm. It was as though they were chatting to each other. It was like a meeting. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like giving a conference presentation. Mm -hmm. So our jo job is to get people over that fear that imposter syndrome. Yes. The whole theme this year was about imposter syndrome. They are a profession. Mm -hmm. They are recognized. Mm -hmm. They are making a difference. And that was what was so important. All of our speakers, including yourself, mm -hmm. 
everybody was about giving them the confidence. Mm -hmm. And it was at the end, it was ultimately like, we now give you the permission mm. to go out and make a difference in your businesses. Mm. And that's what came across very true, very clearly yeah. when we were talking through the, the whole situation. Yeah, it's interesting you mentioned the imposter syndrome. One or two of the ladies who got up to speak mentioned it as well. And if you just walked in off the street and were watching this, you wouldn't have known that they were nervous. You wouldn't have known that they hadn't got up on a stage before. Um, and what was most impressive for me is, because actually as, as a professional speaker, uh, any comedian will tell you, it's easier to deliver standing up. But when you've got to sit on a panel of four people on a slightly raised stage, and you've got 300 out of your peers looking up at you, that's quite intimidating. <laughs> so, you know, we will come on to how you deliver change in the broader sense uh, across a business. You've created a community. You've recognized the fact that they are not, by nature, the most confident people. You've given them the confidence. Now, I look at that, and I've seen the evolution of them in their performance as they've been on stage. What's the next challenge you're going to give them? Look, I think this conference we've just gone, we've just asked them to, we've just challenged them. We've said the Accounts Payable Association has had a journey. It's created from a small cohort to a community, to an industry, and we now proudly represent a profession. Yep. And now we're asking them to join us as a profession and put their heads above the parapet. Mm -hmm. Be proud of who they are, be proud of being a part of a profession and actually go and get the recognition you fully deserve. Mm -hmm. It's one thing as an association to represent them as a community, as an industry and a profession, mm -hmm. it's on them now to do so. Mm -hmm. We're fully behind them, we fully support them, mm -hmm. but we want them to have the confidence with our support yeah. to really put their head above that parapet mm -hmm. and absolutely realise they are experts in their own field. Okay, well, that, that's that's... That's real. I, I don't think I could, I could fault that at all, to be honest. Um, when I look at it from the association perspective, and we see some of the other players, should we say, on the pitch, and other network associations which exist in the finance space, and there is a fair plethora of them, several of them have achieved chartered status. Is that a name? Maybe for the future, um, but we're quite happy where we are. Um, what, the difference with ourselves and other financial institutes around the world is our community is the most important part for us. It's the development of the individuals. We are for our community, by our community, or by, for our members, by our members. Mm -hmm. So all the people you heard speak at our conference mm -hmm. were from within our membership community. Large and small, yeah. successful. Uh, I think for me, it's one of those where it'd be great to have a chartered status, mm. but how does that value our community? Mm. If the community say, Jamie, this is what we want, and as a community, we would recognize that, we will do it. Yeah. If finance directors, CFOs want that recognition because they'll then promote individuals, we'll do it. Yeah. But as we are growing and we're, we're putting back into the community, why would we do it at the moment? I don't want to go through red tape yeah. for the benefit of having chartered status. Yeah. We're making a difference, we're making an impact, mm -hmm. and our community speak with their feet. And when they want that, we'll go get it. I think that that's actually a very powerful way to look at it. I think it's very interesting because when you, when you work in the UK, there's obviously a cachet, should we say, to having chartered status to your, to your association. But you've not constrained yourself by the borders of the UK. You know, we see Mary Schaefer come in from the States in order to present um, from at least the second year. And you had another lady come in from Philadelphia. Tell us the backstory there. Yeah, so Mandy Jenkins joined us from Philadelphia. So she was, she's been a member of the association for four years. Mm -hmm. She recognized that there are Organizations in the States that support um, accounts payable, payables professionals, very good organizations, but she wanted to join a community. Mm. So she didn't necessarily want to go to events. She didn't necessarily want to just do certifications and online programs. She, what she actually wanted was to be part of a community. Mm. So we, we engaged with Mandy, uh, the interdigital team. She's been doing this very remotely, the, the Zoom networks that we've all been mm -hmm. privy to over the last two or three years. But we had the privilege of Mandy and her husband joining us this year, not only to go onto the stage, um, her, her employer supported financially for her to travel. Yeah. But what she said to me on the gala dinner was that she'd never even traveled out of the States. So it was the first okay. time even using a passport. Yeah. And the first time she used a passport was to yeah. come for her own professional development. Yeah. So for me, that was a huge, huge success. And she absolutely smashed it on stage. Yeah. So it was, an eye-opener for me, very yes. humbling that somebody took that amount of time effort from away from her children, her employer, her employer supported it, so why wouldn't we want to recognise that? Mm. It was absolutely amazing. 
And I, I, to be honest, I was extremely well impressed. She participated in one of the uh, panels and also she, she accepted the challenge from me five minutes in to introduce herself to the crowd, um, which takes a degree of confidence. Where I was going with it was, you're thinking way beyond the UK. Do you even need the chartered stance? Does it make any difference? It not, probably not globally, it doesn't, no. And I think, as I say, look, would we go for chartered states as a point? Maybe. Uh, but at the moment, we are very much around where there's a need, where there's a community, where there's support needed, mm -hmm. we will try and go there. So you're absolutely right. So we are broadening our shores. Mm -hmm. We already started to work with European and, and Asia PAC organisations. Mm -hmm. We will look into going to North America and Canada. Yeah. We will go wherever organisations and people want a community, want the support that we can give them. So the beauty of what we do is we have online programmes, we have online communities, mm -hmm. but we are very, very good when it comes to face-to-face -to -face community engagement. Mm -hmm. So we will look to have international events. We will look to look at global events. Mm -hmm. We're not looking to tread on other people's toes. Mm -hmm. The one thing I would say, and I'd say to anybody who's watching this and the audience today, is the reason why we are successful is that we use the people that are experts in our field, mm -hmm. not people that pretend to be the experts in the field. Yep. Everybody in our industry have, have had the battle scars. Mm -hmm. They are part of our community because they want to be part of it. Mm -hmm. I've lived my life 30 plus years, mm -hmm. starting in Purchase Ledger all those years ago. Mm -hmm. And I progressed my career to where I am today. Mm -hmm. And I would happily do it all over again mm -hmm. to get to where, back where I am. So where everybody, anybody needs the community, the professional association that we have, mm -hmm. we will go and support them. Uh, that's, that's, that's powerful. I, I've watched some of the speakers who've come to this event. Um, you've had some fantastic headline acts. I mean, the other day we had Eddie the Eagle Edwards, for those of you of a certain age, I'm sure you've all remembered watching them all through the 80s. Unbelievable story. I actually thought his wife was equally as interesting. She was going to come on stage and tell the story. You've had Mandy Hickson, the first female fighter pilot in the RAF. And you've also had, on two or three occasions, uh, Brad Burton, who is Britain's number one business speaker. Now, when I watched the event the other day, and I was always fascinated watching Brad and the energy he brings to this, and then you had another chap, John Sunderland, Sunderland right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, all about motivation and you know how the brain is wired in order to ch achieve change and move yourself forward. When are we going to have one of those eight, which of you think of the AP managers as the one that's going to be going, we don't need Brad this year, Jamie. I can honestly say I've got a number of them. There's a guy in the audience, I'm pretty sure he'd love to do this. So we have a, a guy called Stuart Griffiths, I believe has the confidence to do this. Mm -hmm. um, we have the likes of Rachel Long, who's yeah. a, a very successful AP manager. We have the likes of Gemma, Gemma uh, Durham, who, who got up on stage at the gala dinner and delivered an absolutely amazing speech with a poem all around the payables world. Um, and I can go on, mm -hmm. I promise you I can, I can list numerous people that would love the opportunity to do so. Mm -hmm. But what I would say, and I'd say this very strongly, is that I encourage all of these individuals to do whatever they wish, and I ask them to try and put themselves out of their comfort zone. Mm -hmm. But at no point is there a commitment from us, and there's, no, there's never a time when I absolutely need them to do it. Mm -hmm. It's only if they want to do it, they mm -hmm. have the confidence, and I encourage them, yeah. and I hopefully support them, yeah. but I have a number of people, and mm -hmm. they're but a few of a, um, a list, I promise you, that, mm. okay, are they going to be the next Brad Burton? Mm -hmm. I reckon a few of them could, actually, yes, I, I um, think in so, our I world. Think so. And as I say, the, the likes of the Stuarts of the world, he has the confidence, he has the passion, he has the desire, and he just needs that platform, mm -hmm. which we will give him, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I, look, I look forward to that. Um, Brad, he's a close friend. Absolutely. And he's an absolutely amazing character. The story is phenomenal, and the energy he brings on stage is just out of this world. I'm sure in the background he'd quite easily coach along some of the next generation. He would. I mean, again, look, uh, Brad's been a friend and a mentor to me, as you have. Mm -hmm. um, I would absolutely say that Brad would support and has supported our community at large. So some of the people I mentioned there have actually gone through Brad's programme. There's, oh. there's a speaking programme that Brad yep. does. Um, and it's all about overcoming adversity, overcoming your challenges within, giving you the confidence. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things that Brad absolutely says is, if you know the subject you're going to talk about, mm -hmm. you've got the confidence, go talk. Yes. If you're gonna go and deliver somebody else's slides, mm -hmm. that's when the challenges come. Yeah. So know your subject, know what you're trying to talk about, mm -hmm. and deliver it, deliver it with passion. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, as I say, I've, I've had the pleasure of watching individuals flourish with Brad's 
support and guidance. So I'm absolutely confident that Firstly, I don't have to pay for a speaker any longer. Mm. That's always a challenge. <laughs> so financially, yeah, that's a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, I would absolutely, we, we never ever close out our network for anybody that wants to come and do this. Mm -hmm. So it can be from the youngest, the most inexperienced person. If they want to go on stage, we will support them to our most experienced members and supporters and the people that sit in this community and proudly wear this badge. Mm -hmm. These are influencers and they deserve that recognition and that platform. Very well said. I have one last question to wrap it up. Um, you obviously have a very supportive wife, Rachel, and a, a lovely family behind you. You're, I'd say, a settled, happy individual within yourself. Yet yeah, we all look at it at this stage, we're all, you know, just, just over the nudge of 50, we'll say, we won't go into the details. And you look at what's left of the career, which I suppose until they hand us each the retirement package, that's about another 15 years. What do you want to say when you reach 65 and look back on the 15 years we're about to have? Well, look, I mean, when I set the association up all those years ago, I set it because I wanted to make a change. I wanted to give a platform. I wanted to make change to people's lives. Ultimately, what that's given me then is the, is the ability to, to actually have a legacy. Mm -hmm. I want my children to look at what we did as an industry, not me, our industry and what we did as a profession. So it's all about legacy for me. Yeah. At some point, absolutely, mm -hmm. I want to hang up the pin, I want to hang up and sit back. Mm -hmm. And not yet, I'm not quite there yet, mm -hmm. but actually, I, I want to make not. sure. Absolutely, yeah, <laughs> we're, we're similar age. Uh, yeah. I want to make sure that everybody has had the ability to try and improve what they do in their roles. And if we can honestly say we've supported as many people as we can, Brad's last slide at this week, you know, was help many hurt few. That was his last slide. Yeah. We do exactly the same thing. So we go out as much as we possibly can, give people the, the, the platform to go and try and develop as much as they can. Mm -hmm. Me personally, what's my career progression? Who knows? Who knows what tomorrow's going to bring? But I promise you I'll bring the energy and I will always be there for our community no mm -hmm. matter what. Yeah. And I have to say, as, as we wrap up the, the first interview that we have today, everything that Jamie says will resonate through the other conversations which we will take place around how you deliver change at either a finance function, procurement function, function or a business-wide level. And you can clearly see a lot of people get very stressed with change. Uh, this man two days ago delivered the highest pinnacle of his career. Look at him. <laughs> he has worked out how to deliver it so he can enjoy it which is a fact which I think gets frequently forgotten when people talk about founders and what's necessary to get to the next stage and all of this kind of stuff. And if you embody the success yourself, you're actually going to encourage the same actions out of the people who are not his organization or his business, as he repeatedly says, his community. And I think that deserves a round of applause. Well done, Jamie. Thank you very much.